Okay, day one. <laughs> you ready to do this? Hey, before we head out to the bus, let me show you a quick tour of the uh, of our cabins. So here's our little bunk space right here. Um, we've got that fan for air conditioning there, and this fan, and then we wired a couple fans into the bed. There's my bed right there. Uh, we've got a sink. We've got some pretty basic showers and some pretty basic toilets over here, but. This is about it for the uh, fanciness of the room. We had a really fun morning visiting with a family who lives nearby, and it's interesting to see this whole neighborhood down here is pretty similar to this block wall construction with stucco uh, on the outside. We talked to one of the homeowners, and the church also said the same thing. There's no running water in this neighborhood, but they have tanks on the roofs and they deliver water on Tuesdays and Saturdays. It's about $20 for a delivery. I'm guessing that tank on the roof's about a 100 gallon tank. Uh, and they say it usually lasts two to maybe three days. So they're definitely going to that water for a day. Now drinking water on the other hand, they're, they're actually going and getting those big five gallon jugs. It's about 80 cents US. Uh, I think it was around 40 pesos to, uh, to get that filled. And that's what they're using for drinking water. The other thing I thought was really interesting is a lot of these houses have concrete roofs, but this church over here, for instance, um, has a wood roof, and that's that's pretty common as well with tin on the top. Uh, but it's interesting to see all these concrete buildings. I bet this, this place would fare really well in a hurricane. We're also seeing a lot of rebar use as well. So I think if uh, if something terrible happens around here, these, these houses are gonna survive pretty well. The other thing I thought was really cool is a ton of metalwork, a ton of bars like this house right here behind us. Uh, all the way up bars, including a slider for where their garage door is uh, right here. So we're seeing some really interesting stuff in this downtown neighborhood. Hey guys, just back from a great day out in the city, but we're back on their campus. Uh, and Mission of Hope's been here for maybe a couple, six months or so. I love the ingenuity. Look, they've got uh, four shipping containers over here. They've kind of turned into... A, uh, a bit of a, um, a camp. So follow me, I'll give you a quick tour. Steven, give us a tour, man. So tell me about the windows first off over here, Steven. So we had um, a neighbor, God miraculously provided contact of a guy who had a plasma cutter and cut out the holes for us. And he actually had metal, sheet metal bent to make these frames to put around them and welded it, cut it and welded it for us. And now we're making, uh, Hurricane awesome. shutters like are awning them, for which this. Would be awnings as well. That's really smart. Yeah. And these are 40 foot cans, right? These are 40 foot cans. So when you cut these doors out, what am I seeing? What's this? Uh, the black tar up top here. So that's for waterproofing. We tried. We silicone caulked around this after we spot welded it in, but then uh, we were still, you know, we had puddles up there, so. We put tar and rocks in there, a layer of tar, a layer of rocks, just uh, and smashed them down in so that it filled up the, the voids there. So now the water can't sit in there. Smart, yep. I like it. Yeah, this is tight in here, man. So we're looking about an eight foot dimension right here, right? Because yep. you've got bunk beds. So in this section of the can, you've got kind of a living room kitchen space. Check this out, this is kind of cool. Ah, AC as well. We have AC. It, uh, we drill holes in the floor for the hot air to go out the bottom. And and check out the kitchen too, you did a great job in the kitchen. So you got some propane right here. Yep. Uh, get some kitchen cabinets. Are these sourced locally? I've never seen these before. They look metal. Yeah, they were stick built by our same guy that did the doors and windows. Uh, did these cabinets? Christian Dominican guy. Yeah, wow, he did those that's cabinets. cool. Tankless water heater. Just a little natural gas unit, I guess, huh? Yep. And so you've got a little splitter right here. So you got natural gas going to the earth, to the natural oven, gas, propane so rather, propane, yeah. to the stove, and then propane right here. Mm -hmm. And he turns on the hot. So it's lighting, and there, there's your temperature on your outgoing water. So 66, 63 degrees Celsius. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yesterday when we were at the school, uh, Macarios, the head uh, master of the school said that uh, houses in his area, poor people lived in uh, wood houses and we're seeing here in um, this more urban area that there are certainly some wood houses in there and less 
good shape and he specifically said that the middle class on the other hand lives in concrete houses so it'll be interesting to see as we uh, travel throughout the city and a little bit of the countryside the difference between wood houses and concrete houses and I, I think that's going to ring true that uh, the concrete houses are more expensive uh, they're going to be more long-lasting and durable they're going to last through hurricanes and other big events like that the wood houses probably are a little less expensive to build uh, and probably maintain but uh, but less good all right so here with a uh, dominican builder he's setting forms on both sides here so that he can stucco this and then this will get a window inserted on it. So he was taking measurements from here to this board. Also interesting to see he's using rebar as a clamp right here. And then once he gets it uh, square across, he's gonna clamp that side too. And then we're making sand, or we've got sand going down here that he's been straining to make uh, uh, basically mortar uh, or stucco similar and then he's going to stucco this to make a nice opening for the uh for the window pretty smart i like this all right y'all so the team's making good progress here on bringing the sand down from the street up there down to the house but i thought i'd show you a couple things in the house so block construction single wide meaning just a single block wide and I just showed you the uh, builder there that's prepping the openings. But in this case here, this hasn't been stuccoed yet. Uh, here you go, Aaron. So you can see what's going on here. So they've got a bond beam with some rebar uh, spanning the header right there. And then he's gonna make that opening the correct width for when the windows go in. And then the windows that we're seeing are pretty typical here throughout uh, the Dominican Republic. It's a aluminum slatted window like this that you can close for privacy and shade you can open it for uh, ventilation. And then almost, almost all the houses that we're seeing have some kind of bars in front of them. We're also seeing that metal holocard doors are pretty, uh, pretty standard. And you can see those details on this house up the street that were uh, just installed not too long ago. So here's another house right here that was uh, completed not too long ago. It looks like they don't, now they have the roof on. They're not quite done yet. Uh, but these are those slat windows, a real nice aluminum slat. They come powder coated, it looks like, from the factory. This one even looks like it's got a weather strip on it, which is nice. And then a uh, tiled floor on cement, pretty standard here. Holocore door, I'm not sure why, but I'm seeing this gap on the top of all the doors. I'm assuming that's just a ventilation gap. I don't ever see that filled in, which is interesting, I'm not sure why. I guess just to let it in. And then here's the top of the house that we're working on right there. Get, looks like they've got a couple of uh, uphill windows to let some light in. Hopefully they won't have water coming down this hill because this hill is pretty, pretty steep right here. Once makes me want to pull a trash bag out and clean up around here. It's sad to see the trash in this neighborhood. Shows the longevity of a tin roof. Look, this house has a little bit of new tin but most of the house is recycled tin. And even that house over there, you know, my guess is that's been on for decades. It's rusty, but it's still still doing its job right here in this uh, little inner city, hilly Dominican neighborhood. Looking good. Hey guys, good morning, day two. And we are back at the uh, house under construction for Ruth. I learned a little bit of good information yesterday. Um, one thing that I love about Mission of Hope is that they use North Americans who come uh, to help out, but we're not supposed to be the main builders. Uh, so the guys you met yesterday uh, that are of Haitian descent, they're really the main builders on this project. So we're just here to help. That's why we moved sand yesterday. I believe we're going to be working on some windows and doors today, but again, we're supposed to be helpers. Uh, so really the, the Haitian guys um, that were working yesterday, those are really the main builders uh, doing most of the labor. But they got quite a bit done even after we left yesterday. I'll take a little tour and show you what uh, we got going on. So where Kevin is back here, uh, they finished framing out those doorways um, with this so that um, uh, we've got an actual frame doorway that's ready to go and this has been stuccoed. So now when that jam gets set in there, we're gonna be all set. That's gonna look nice. Uh, they finished some of the interior, uh, I guess you'd call it plastering. <laughs> It's really stucco coat on top of the um, on top of the cement block, so that got that happened over here. 
We also understand that there are going to be ceilings installed in the house here. I think it's going to be a wood ceiling uh, in some of this area, so you won't necessarily see the roof. We'll have a wood ceiling when it's all done. But a uh, pretty modest house. I love it. I think it's going to be a great house for Ruth. Um, you know, I was watching uh, a series of a couple videos prior to uh, coming on this trip, and one of, the, one of the videos that I was watching was talking about the differences between relief, redevelopment, or pardon me, relief, rehabilitation, and development work. And one of the things that I really love about Mission of Hope and what they're doing is that it's not just relief work. You know, relief work is when the hurricane happens, you come in and you help people clean up and uh, rebuild and then leave. But what's happening with Mission of Hope is relief work, certainly. I understand that Ruth's uh, previous house actually burned down on a fire. Uh, so this is relief helping her with this new house. And Mission of Hope is doing that through the local church, which I love too. She doesn't feel like uh, these are Americans providing a house for her. This is the local church that's providing for her. Uh, there's certainly some rehabilitation that's happening here as well, getting this house up to speed. But the thing that I love about Mission of Hope and what they do is that they're really interested in development. And that's really a more holistic approach, you know, making sure that the local church uh, is doing the work and is in place and not just swooping in and doing something and leaving. Uh, you know, when we were at the Haitian village the other day in Makarios, there was a building built there that they built as a um, schoolhouse. It was built as a schoolhouse, and it was a foreign uh, country that came, uh, you know, some kind of relief organization. They built the schoolhouse in this really poor Haitian village on the, on the side of a mountain in the Dominican Republic here. They built the schoolhouse and left, and there was no teachers, there was no real plan for how that building was going to be used uh, and ultimately Macarios kind of took it over as a community center but our understanding is there was a bunch of fighting among families uh, as to who was going to use it as their house it was a source of tension in the community so that's kind of when helping goes wrong but what I love about both visiting Macarios the other day and what Mission of Hope does is that it's not just swooping in, helping, and doing relief work and leaving. There's a long-term commitment. Um, there's the idea that all the leadership is local leadership, and the North Americans that come are just providing some aid for the local uh, leadership, uh, doing short-term things, and hopefully partnering with these uh, organizations long-term on the development side of things so that these families aren't just left with a new house but no other resources. Uh, which leads me to the last thing I wanted to talk about in these videos, which is what is true poverty? You know, as a, as a North American, I think of poverty and, and the definition of poverty as a lack of material things. Um, but one of the videos I watched, I'll put a link in the description to it, really changed my thinking around what poverty is. And in the video they said that when you ask people around the world, uh, including countries like the DR, what's poverty? Yes, there's material um, possessions and the lack thereof, but there's also relationships and the lack of relationships that is a sense of, that leads to a sense of shame. And that's what poverty is as well as part of their definition. And isn't that true? You know, I can think of lots of Americans that are wealthy, but yet are poor. And you know, ultimately, I don't talk about my faith a whole lot on this channel. You know, we mainly stick to building. Uh, but if you'll permit me for a minute to uh, share with you, uh, you know, I believe that the God of the Bible created us to be in a relationship with Him. And the Bible teaches that God is in three forms. There's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they have a perfect relationship. And us, as human beings, we were created in His image to have relationships both with him and with each other. And those relationships uh, have been broken through sin. That's uh, what came into the world when Adam and Eve first diso were disobedient to God and what he told them to do. And now in my life and in your life, sin rules the day. And that's why this world is broken, right? That's why there, there is material poverty when it wasn't meant to be this way. But you know what? Life is short. <laughs> we're only going to be on this earth a few years. You know, I've been around for 47 years. I'm sure I'm more than halfway through my time on this earth. But then my time in heaven, that's going to be long. I've got multiple millions of years to spend in heaven with, with my Creator. And so, 
this definition of poverty really r rings for me and it has really made me think on this trip about poverty and how much poverty is around me in America uh, even though we're talking about material uh, poverty in this video. Oh, there's Ruth right here coming to visit her house. Anyways, that's that's been something that I've loved seeing uh, here in the Dominican Republic is that uh, even where there's material poverty, a lot of times there's not relational poverty. And Ruth's a great example of that. She's married, she has children, she has some good relationships. Um, and so even though she, she may be poorer in my standards or in the American standards, she's by no means uh, poor uh, in the economy of God's economy. Anyways guys, we need to get back to work, uh, but I will catch up with you later. The massage coat on the stucco. <laughs> so we've got our, our rough stucco here, and then this is really what the final look's gonna be, where he's just taking a little water out of here, sponging it up, and then smoothing it down. All right, we got a little break in the action. Let's talk uh, septic and uh, water. So see the stream coming down from up there all the way down the hill that we've kind of been near all week. Um, all of their gray water kind of gets dumped in there. So we saw like a washing machine going and soapy water coming down here. So kind of all the, all the normal water goes there. But then this white pipe you see here, that's a sewer pipe for the neighborhood. Uh, and all the black water's coming into that, that sewer pipe right there. I asked the pastor where it goes, and the best I could understand was that there's a big pit or maybe a lake at the end down here somewhere. Uh, I don't see that, and I've got a barbed wire fence in between me and there, so I'm not gonna explore, but uh, I think that's the best I can understand is that there is some kind of septic, or maybe it's just dumping into a lake, but um, same kind of scenario for water as the other area. There's water jugs you know, like 50, 100 gallon jugs, and they, they get some water service dropping off water from them on a semi-regular basis, and it's, you know, maybe 10 or 20 bucks. Oh, look at this, we got a delivery going on. Washing machine. Oh, uh, washing machine service? Does that mean that it was serviced, or that he's delivering a new one? Check that out, now that is amazing. No trucks back here. We've got two guys on the delivery. Pretty lightweight. Probably plastic tub. That's just like the washing machine that we saw. That's pretty awesome. I gotta say, I was super impressed yesterday. I saw a couple women uh, walking around that had super clean clothes on, white outfits. And in this neighborhood, I mean, you, you would not expect folks to be so clean and like the kids like this little boy over here he's perfectly dressed his clothes are perfectly clean there's just a sense of dignity oh. check this out i've never seen a uh oh, look at that That's a cool. uh dominican washing machine so she's hand rubbing here but then it goes in and the machine spins it around she's got soapy water oh that is cool i like that doing a little hand washing that's really cool you know i gotta say one of the things that's really struck me uh, about being here is how clean everyone's clothes are. So they rolled this thing out and then it's just it's just uh, discharging right here. It's just soapy water and it's gonna discharge down here and it's getting the clean water from this and she's dumping in here. That is so cool. The Techno Master. That's really awesome. Muy bien. Gracias, gracias. Hey guys, here's a receipt on the uh, cement delivery. So we got six bags and it was 19 uh, 20 and with shipping, which is 55 pesos, we were 19 90 and here's our shipping uh, container right there. <laughs> he brought two bags at a time. So it was about uh, 35 bucks for six bags. That is pretty cool to see. Hey guys, I'm tired. Uh, just came back to the uh, campus area and thought I'd kind of narrate a little bit about uh, 
what we've done so far this week and what the trip's been like. So first of all, thank you if you are one of the, uh, gosh, we had over 100 people support us uh, for coming out here, for, for uh, financially supporting my family and I, for making it out to the, to the Dominican Republic. Um, we're, we're here with an organization called Mission of Hope. Uh, they've got mainly, they started operations in Haiti, but now they've got operations in several uh, areas. And the Dominican Republic shares an island with Haiti. And so there's uh, a lot of Haitians in the Dominican Republic that are looking for work and then have uh, kind of migrated here. Although it's interesting, I, I, I didn't know that much about relationships between Dominicans and Haitians, but kind of historically there's been a lot of animosity between uh, the two nations. And so there's a fair amount of racism between uh, uh, Dominicans who are native in this area and Haitians. And you can generally tell um, the race because of their skin color too. Um, Haiti was uh, generally African slaves and so they, most Haitians look African, very dark skinned. Haitians look Hispanic. Uh, this was a, uh, or pardon me, the Dominican Republic uh, is formerly a Spanish colony and so they look, uh, Dominicans look Hispanic. Um, so there's definitely neighborhoods and in fact we saw that yesterday really evidently when we got a chance to go through um, to walk through some neighborhoods. One of the most fun parts of the trip was getting a chance to, to drive over to a school about two hours away called Macarios. Uh, interestingly enough that Mission of Hope and Macarios both have their US bases uh, in Austin, Texas. That was kind of cool. And some of the families that we've come with uh, we have been supporting kids at Macario's for years, so we got a chance to take a day trip over there. And I knew a little bit about the organization. Uh, I actually attended one of their benefit dinners prior, um, but we didn't. We, we hadn't sponsored kids previous. And I got to tell you, that is one of the most incredible organizations. They are doing such good work. Uh, they've got like uh, 200 kids in school at Macario's uh, from pre-K all the way up, uh, they're hoping to actually add in a high school level soon. Uh, but all the kids have some level of sponsorship uh, from outside help, I think mainly Americans. Uh, but for 150 bucks a month in sponsorship, these kids are given two meals a day, an amazing education, uh, a mainly um, Haitian, or pardon me, a mainly Dominican uh, staff that uh, was just absolutely incredible. They also have a family center there, including a biblical counselor, they're helping families uh, stay together and work through problems just like we would see in the States. Gosh, that was just, that trip over to Macarios just absolutely blew me away. Those kids were amazing. And the work they're doing there is just really top notch. Uh, and then back to uh, Dominican Republic where I am here, a Mission of Hope's only been here for maybe nine months or so. So this is a relatively new uh, campus for them where we are here they've got a local church that actually uh, owns this property and they've been kind of leasing the property and mission of hope does a great job of working with local pastors uh, to help empower those local pastors and bring resources in for them as well including these trips from americans north americans canadians coming down here and helping support what missionary work is going on and, and relief work's already going on there so for instance the house that we we're at today I think Mission of Hope has helped um, fund some of that house, or a lot of that house, but they've been doing it through the local church. So the, uh, the woman that we met, Rose, no, only knows really that the church has been helping and providing for that house and, and doing a lot of the work. I also love that they have local folks, in this case uh, Haitians that are settled here in the Dominican Republic, actually doing the, the construction work. And really, we're there, we're there to do labor. You know, we, we hauled sand from the street down. Uh, I think tomorrow we're gonna help install windows and doors, but again, we're not the main builders. We're just here to be supplemental labor. Um, both amazing organizations, and what a trip this has been for my family and I to, uh, to see some other cultures. A Couple things that I think are interesting that uh, I've been thinking about from just a, cons a purely construction standpoint. Uh, you know, in America, we have pretty high, uh, are pretty low tolerances when it comes to comfort and here in the Dominican Republic uh, I think people's comfort tolerance is a little different I'm not seeing a lot of air conditioners here in the Dominican Republic and it's as hot every bit as hot if not absolutely hotter than where uh, I'm from in Texas uh, so like the dorm room that I've been staying in not air conditioned uh, just fans going and that's pretty much every house that we've seen 
um, with very few exceptions that might have a little bit of uh, supplement or air conditioning, maybe a mini split in their, um, uh, in their bedroom. And where we attended church on Sunday, they had a couple of units on the uh, ceiling, I noticed when we came in, and then they had what I would call maxi splits on the wall, which were some big wall-mounted units uh, cooling the church down. But other than that, gosh, these Dominicans are hardy people. Uh, we're talking fans for cooling and that's it. Um, the other thing I thought was really interesting is uh, very concrete construction. You know, being an American, we, we think of everything being made from wood and any concrete rock block that we see, it's typically a facade on the outside, but the structure is wood except for commercial buildings. And, and it's, uh, it's really opposite here. You know, I heard one of the pastors say that, uh, or actually the school superintendent the other day at Macario said that uh, the wood buildings are the poor people's houses and the concrete buildings, the block buildings, that's the middle class here in the Dominican Republic. So I love seeing that. I mean, certainly much more storm hardy, much more durable long term. Uh, they do have earthquakes here. They have hurricanes that come through. So with rebar and cinder block, and concrete construction. These are gonna be some durable houses. The other thing that's really interesting is we're in a hot, humid climate here, and what I have not noticed is any mold. I haven't seen any mold growing on any of the walls anywhere in these houses, even in really poor people's houses, which I think is interesting. Uh, now, obviously, some really good airflow through these houses as well. In fact, uh, I think I have yet to see a house uh, with glass that wasn't a government building or something that I drove by all the neighborhoods we've seen um, have um, louvered uh, aluminum windows like in our dorm room uh, over here. So plenty of airflow, plenty of outside air, and of course the gold standard for uh, air quality is outside air. But again, these are concrete buildings, so thoroughly durable. If water's leaking into the building, it's leaking onto concrete, and we don't have mold issues. Anyways, I should wrap it up. Guys, I'll put a link in the description below for uh, Mission of Hope. If you um, are a builder or, or just anybody who's interested in taking your family on a, uh, on a mission trip to see what they do to help relieve uh, folks and see what happens uh, both in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And I think they're doing some uh, Caribbean trips as well. I've heard that uh, they've got some trips to the Bahamas to help out with the... Uh, with the massive uh, relief effort that's happening there too. I'll put a link in the description for Mission of Hope. And if you're interested in sponsoring a kid through Macarios, they actually do it in uh, $50 increments. Uh, I'm talking about Macarios, Will. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Will, do you have any thoughts about the uh, trip before I close out the video? This has been the most fun trip besides Haiti that I've ever had. I love them both and go support the Macarios kids. Yeah, no doubt. Guys, we'll put a link in the description for both Macarios and Mission of Hope. Um, but as you can see, my kids have had a great time. It's really uh, been impactful for them to see how kids around the world live. Um, I mean, we were in probably one of the poor neighborhoods today, wouldn't you say, Will? Yeah. Uh, in the Dominican Republic. And yet the kids were happy. They were well fed. They were well clothed. Um, but they sure don't have the material possessions that we do, do they? No, not at all. But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, thanks for uh, watching this special edition from the Dominican Republic. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. We'll be going back to our normal uh, construction content after this video. <laughs> but uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on, on the, the Build, Build Show. Show. <laughs> <laughs>